Howdy everyone, welcome back to another episode of Played With Toys, Jaime here, and today we're taking a look at the Star Wars So Hey, So Hi, I don't know, Samurai, Darth Maul, <laughs> it's not really Samurai, but it's from the movie Realization uh, series from their, you know, uh, they've got like Star Wars, uh, Marvel now, so pretty cool stuff. I have just really gotten into the Star Wars ones, don't think I'm going to mess with the Marvel ones, um, but I do really dig these Star Wars ones for sure, and I've gotten a few of them. Uh, so this is my third and I would pick this up at what was it the Barnes and Noble? I think the other day. Yeah, Barnes and Noble. So um, Pretty cool figure definitely like it dig it and these are a larger scale than the figure arts figures that I'm used to I kind of swore them off I was like, I don't think I'm gonna buy these but man. I don't know. They just kept making these really cool designs and you know, I like my uh, uh, Asian inspired um, Motifs I guess you could say uh, so these are pretty cool. I'm glad to have some like crazy Star Wars, you know, samurai stuff, but box is freaking awesome. Really like these boxes quite a bit. They make for a nice like bookshelf presentation, um, with their, you know, on the side there. Interesting enough, it says Disney. I never realized that. Now these are again larger. So the box is, you know, pretty decent size. Like, uh, I don't know, has a lot of like interesting stuff here you got like this crazy face his face is so crazy to me um but we'll go over that in just a bit and then uh, i do think that you know it accurately uh, portrays it like has some pretty good movement but not like insane like figure arts or anything so um i don't think it's necessarily meant for that because i mean they're in this clunky armor and everything so but let's go ahead and uh, check it out and open this box up and see what's inside opening the box you have this directions we can just Toss those aside, and we have Darth Maul here with his like mask. Like I don't know if it's like a Kabuki style mask or whatever you want to call it. Uh, two of his lightsabers, and then uh, let's see one, two. So you have three total pairs of hands. Uh, so I don't know. Let's go ahead and crack them out and see what we got. Taking Darth Maul out of the package, you can see he looks fantastic. I think this is a very cool looking figure. It, if it was possible to make Darth Maul look even more demon like, well, they've done it. Um, he incorporates, I think, just these crazy eyes that he's got going on into the face. Even they just look more really uh, not hollow, but they just they're very ghostly, very otherworldly. Um, I guess you could say. So I really, really like the look of this guy. Um, he looks creepy, and I think that almost uh, <laughs> lifeless in a creepy way. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but not like a doll, but maybe like a doll. I don't know. You decide. But, you know, the colors work really, really well. And then you've got this, like, kind of shimmering green down there. I really like that with the uh, really cool pads and these beads accenting, along with these, like, kind of metal, uh, you know, coverings around interspersed, you know, for his uh, gauntlets there and shin guards. And then there on his, like, uh, you know, kind of lower uh, dress um, area and for his midsection. So very cool. And I definitely dig these uh, heavy beads. And the shoulder pads, of course, are pretty nice. Um, very, you know, just uh, or kind of ornate in a strange uh, strange way. Um, so, and of course, you know, the horns and everything just look really, really good. And then you've got this array of accessories here. We've got, you know, a couple open pairs of hands, uh, some lightsaber hands, uh, holding hands. And then, of course, the, uh, you know, lightsabers, which go together there's a piece right here uh you can put it together and then of course these twist around and i think one of these twists around i could be no maybe not i could have sworn that these things move around but yeah they move around a little bit i don't know if they're meant to but they do so anyway and you can you know kind of orient these however you like or have them dual wielding now i will say that it was a bit hard to put these not hard i just worry about paint rub you know it's a tight fit I mean, which is a good thing and a bad thing. So it's, you know, you've really got to push, cram it in there. But once you've kind of got it past that, uh, you know, initial part right there, you can, uh, you know, got some wiggle room. It's not really going to do the paint rub. So it's just right there. Um, but so they do, you know, go over that. And then you've got a really cool uh, mask here, which just goes right on his face like that. Oh, no, I think it goes under the horn. I had it on before. Here we go. There we go. So it just kind of fits. Now mine seems to be a little crooked. Um, don't know if that's just mine. I'm sure it is because I think I've seen pictures like where it's not crooked. But you get the idea. So what do you think? I think that looks really, really good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, I think it looks, yeah, a really cool like alternate look in that. So I'm going to have them displayed on the shelf. So um, they look really, really nice. I, you know, just mm, looking at this. <laughs> I can see why they've, you know, been continuing this line and kind of been successful with it. And now are branching out into 
uh, Marvel, so who knows what they do next. I'm actually kind of looking forward to the uh, Batman uh, Ninja line, because it kind of, you know, I think they're going to, even though they're going to uh, larger scale, it's just going to kind of, you know, go right into that whole motif of the, you know, Japanese-inspired, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Asian-inspired, uh, you know, Western licenses, I guess you could say. So, um, but yeah, switching hands is pretty easy. So that's, you know, I just got to pop it on there a little bit hard. So, um, and then you have the lightsaber on there and just, voila. Just going to push it in pretty well. Just going to make sure you don't bend it, of course, but there we go. All right, so there we go. And holding the lightsaber, no issue. If you wanted to have them, you, know, you can just plug it into the other section there, but if you want to have them dual wield, you got to push it in. And it, again, it is kind of tough, so just, uh, you know, push through it and you'll get it. But uh, there he is with his, you know, crazy lightsabers and, you know, and this cool, like, head, head stuff. So looks pretty good, I think. But let's go ahead and go over articulation. All right, so let's not kid ourselves. We're going to be using Darth Maul with lightsabers. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave them on. Honestly, because I don't want to mess with the paint rub on it, honestly. Uh, this mask is not going to affect articulation anyway, so nothing to worry about there. But uh, he does have a double uh, neck joint there, so um, lets him look down about that much and up about that much. So pretty okay. I mean, like I said, these aren't you know as good as figure arts, but you know, side to side is pretty decent. Um, that definitely acceptable. So pretty decent range of motion there, and his head will pop off. Oh, there went his beads, of course, because the head popped off. Let's just go ahead and stick his head back on there, but there was a nice look at the joint there. So um, you can get some decent play out of that. You saw that joint was actually pretty long. So yeah, looks all right. Now for the arms, this is, of course, on that ball peg there, separate. I don't think that this piece moves back and forth. Oh, actually, it does. The little piece under here does move back and forth just a little bit and rocks back and forth so that's kind of cool just to kind of give you just that much more so you can move it's a little sticky um, let's go ahead and yeah so that stuff is going to get in the way I mean and it does kind of tend to fall off so but you can pull his arms up there up to that you just might have to wiggle this thing around a little bit and you know it's very tight very uh, you know you, know, you hear that that noise in there, and uh, so you can get him up and you know down like that much. So not the craziest articulation or anything like that, um, but you know not the worst. Able to get side to side. It's not you know yeah it's not very very good. So <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but it's acceptable given that you know I, I see these kind of more of like a statuesque line. Um, you know these guys are in armor and stuff. I don't expect the samurai to be incredibly mobile. I mean they're somewhat mobile, but you know just like a a, 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 uh, ah, somebody in uh, you know plate mail <laughs> they're going to have lim somewhat limited our movement because they're wearing armor and as you can see this thing is just uh, flying everywhere so fun stuff anyway double jointed uh, elbow pretty decent so not too bad and then you've got a swivel there as well so that swivel is going to make it easier for you to move and then you've got a swivel I think at the bottom yeah so you've got swivel form swivel bicep um and then that's shoulder swivel there if you want to move it around as well. And then, of course, your wrist moves up and down. Now, what's interesting is, you know, I like it's kind of like this back and forth peg. Um, almost reminds me of like Hasbro, I guess. So, or like a robot, robotic uh, holder. But it works because it's, I guess, bigger. So I think that's the way yeah, even Darth Vader is. So very interesting. And then you've got this uh, torso here. It's just single joint. Um, and then cause you've got like, uh, it goes from here to here. But you know you're not really getting movement out of that. Um, the skirt does move out of the way. I don't know if these legs are pulled down. I don't think they are. No. So, but you're gonna be able to kick out about that far, and you know move legs out about that far. So, um, knees like so, a little bit you know 90 degrees or so. Nothing crazy. Um, but feet here are interesting. You got like this ball peg. And so you can go back and forth like so. Um, don't have any uh, the toe pivot. And then I would say side to side motion is pretty, uh, you know, it's just okay. So you're not going to get really um, much of this kind of, you know, uh, <clears throat> movement uh, to towards in a rocking motion, I guess. So all in all, articulations, you know, it's okay. It's a mixed bag. I would say uh, overall, it's just, you know, it's okay. Obviously, you know, these aren't figure arts. So, um, but I think the Darth Vader one seems to have pretty good articulation. I don't know. 
for what it is at least. And speaking of Darth Vader. So here are Maul and Vader together, and honestly, in conclusion, I think that this is a really good addition to the line. Now, I only have a few of these figures. Um, I'm gonna go pick up some more, probably at the end of this month. I think the Shadow Trooper's coming out. I'm gonna review that one. I think I've got one pre-order. Uh, I could pick them up already, I just uh, haven't gotten to it yet because I've decided to pre-order some other stuff, so. Um, but this is, you know, a great addition. Very happy to have them. Uh, a little bit tall because, well, you know, I mean, let's face it, I guess if we were thinking he shouldn't be as tall as Vader, but this is also their own line, so they're kind of just making their own interpretation. So I think they have a right to make him as tall as they want to. And he's got horns, you know, Vader's got a helmet, so maybe, you know, whatever, they want to make him the same height just because it's easier for them to deal with, uh, you know, molding issues. I, I don't know. Um, but whatever, I don't really care. I think they look really, really cool together. And I think they look great with the Fets as well. <laughs> so, uh, just freaking awesome. Pleased with these, not the most articulated figures. Um, Darth Maul is certainly, you know, of course not the most articulated one either. Uh, but they look great on the shelf, and you can get them into enough poses uh, that you're going to have a lot of fun with them. So, uh, worth the, you know, 70 to 90 bucks you might pay. I don't know what the going rate is right now for him. Uh, I know one of our first saw him up on Amazon, he was like 70 bucks. I think he's gone up. So if you can get him for like 70 to 80 bucks, I think that's, you know, a fair deal. That's probably what these uh, go for. Um, you know, I got mine at Barnes & Noble for about 80 bucks because I have that, you know, membership thing where they give you 10% off. So it's like $81 or whatever. Uh, so, you know, it was worth it. I enjoy the figure. Um, gonna be playing with it and can't wait to put it in some, uh, you know, pictures and stuff like that and see what I can get out of them. So, uh, totally recommend the purchase. And if you have not picked up anything from this line, also check out, you know, their Django I think is like a pretty inexpensive figure right now. It's like $67. So if you want to spend a little bit less and just check out one of the figures from this line, maybe pick out that one. But this one's pretty new. I could see him going up in price. Who knows? Uh, you know, Boba Fett went up a lot, so who knows what happens. Anyway, guys, y'all take care, and thanks for watching. Happy collecting. Today